dear colleagues, this is the 117th day of the full-scale war of Russia against Ukraine. My name is Natalia Bravo, and this is Media Center Ukraine. Our guest today is Oleksandr Mareshko, Chair of the Foreign Policy and Interparliamentary Cooperation Committee of Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine. Welcome. My first question for you is about the important historic event for Ukraine. This week um, we are expecting a summit where the Ukraine's candidacy prospect will be discussed. What are our expectations? I am quite optimistic and I hope that uh, Ukraine will be granted candidacy status eventually. We understand that this decision is a consensus decision, which means that um, not a single country, EU country, should be against. The president, the parliament, all our colleagues, we did all we could in order to convince EU members to support Ukraine as a candidate of EU. Once Ukraine gets its status, what does that mean for us as a country? It means a lot. First of all, it will be a very powerful sign of support and solidarity with Ukraine. Ukraine is now defending the whole Europe, its values, freedom, democracy and security. Secondly, it could be an impetus for economic development and uh, rebuilding the country. It will also be the sign for investors and a signal for investors to strengthen investment uh, support of Ukraine. Ukraine will be able to use certain EU funds. It will have a um, psychological effect on our people, on our society. We will receive support and it will add to the spirit um, of our army and our society. What are some of the conditions that Ukraine has to meet in order to become the candidate? There is association agreement which has been signed already and there are certain conditions put forward. But before we start negotiation about uh, the candidacy, EU candidacy, EU Commission put forward seven steps that Ukraine has to, to do in order to become the candidate. So this is the legal reform, judicial reform, fighting corruption, one of the key requirements, and legislative changes regarding uh, national minorities. So there are seven steps, seven conditions, basically. Once we meet those steps, or AKA conditions, we can start uh, the negotiation process about the uh, Ukraine's EU candidacy. What conditions are we talking about? What seven steps? As I had already mentioned some of them, so the first step is uh, the constitutional court uh, reform and uh, selecting judges to constitutional court uh, combating corruption. We have already demonstrated quite good uh, progress in this front. We also need to make changes uh, regarding the situation of national minorities. Here we are talking about uh, protecting national minorities and uh, ethnicities. We are already working on it and hopefully in a short period of time we will meet all the requirements. We have a question from our guests, Andriy Shevchenko, Media Center Ukraine. Can you comment um, on your decision about Moldova and uh, Georgia? It's good news. Does that ease our tasks or is that going to create uh, obstacles in the prospects of Ukraine's EU candidacy? And could you also comment on Georgia? 
I believe that um, this is rather the associated trio. This is the way I see it. Ukraine, Moldova and Georgia agreed to support each other and together move towards EU membership. Georgia is our close strategic partner. It has been assigned in our legislation. I believe we have to support those countries on their way on, with their strivings to EU membership. And I hope that um, we can also count on their support. I can only be happy for them. I'm happy that uh, Moldova also received uh, um, EU candidacy prospects. As far as Georgia is concerned, we have to help them because they are brother to us and we all take the same road. My question for you, how much time does Ukraine need before we become the member, EU member? It's a very complex question because different politicians, Western politicians, were talking about different periods. Some were talking about 10 years, even longer. On average, it takes um, four, four to five years, four and a half years from EU candidacy status to membership, full membership. It might be done even quicker. A lot depends on us, on our efficiency, on our performance regarding the reforms, regarding EU integration. But there are certain objective uh, issues. So first of all, we need to win this war. Um, this is the most urgent, most pressing issue, the most pressing assignment that we are facing at the moment. We can only do that with the support and help of our EU friends. And I hope we will get our membership in a year or two, but maybe I'm over optimistic. Let's talk about Ramstein meeting, the third meeting in Ramstein. Could you make your assessment of the meeting? My assessment is um, very positive. Speaking of uh, Rammstein, first of all, we are talking about um, assistance, military assistance, which we need badly. You understand that the situation is very complex. We don't have enough weaponry. I'm talking about artillery. I'm talking about LMRIS that we need badly in order to liberate our territory from the occupants. That's why this um, military assistance um, will be ongoing, and uh, it is ongoing. But the major factor is time. We need it as soon as possible. Did Ukraine manage to resolve the issue of with the heavy weaponry supply and who is ready to provide heavy weaponry? It's a very delicate issue to discuss. I know that the United States are ready to provide uh, heavy weaponry. Poland, Baltic states, Great Britain, so they are also very positive about and um, they are ready to provide us all the necessary weaponry. There are some countries that are beginning to understand the importance of helping Ukraine. I mean Italy, I mean Spain. So they are beginning to provide us the weaponry that we need so badly. But this process is not as expedient as we had hoped it would be. It's rather slow and we are paying a big price for such delays, but hopefully, eventually, we will get what we need and I hope that is going to happen soon. Thank you very much. Our guest was Alexandra Mareshko, Chair of the Foreign Policy and Interparliamentary Cooperation Committee of Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine. At 11.30, we will be talking about grain exports from Ukraine with Olha Trofimtseva, Ambassador-at-Large with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, Coordinator of Exporters and Investors.